What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing an incredible 360 degree camera in zero Gs. If you're not already watching this on a cell phone, you may wanna switch over so that you can follow us along and look at this scene in 360 degrees. I was invited to attend an incredible photo shoot put on by the website company Wix. If you're looking to build a website, check out their stuff. They give you all the tools necessary to do that. But basically there was a photo contest and whoever could come up with the coolest photography concept, Wix would pay for it. If you're interested in learning about the actual photo shoot that took place in zero gravity, make sure to check out the link in the description below. I've done an entire post on the photo shoot itself. But in this video, we're just going to be talking about the Ricoh Theta. It's a very small handheld 360 degree camera that can either do stills or video, and it's one of the most simple products I've ever used before. This entire camera only has four buttons and it doesn't have any sort of screen whatsoever. Down the side, there's a power button, there's a Wi-Fi button so that you can connect it to a cell phone, and then there's a button to switch it from picture and video mode. On the front, there's just one button that either takes a picture or starts recording. So we did about an hour of initiation. We learned about what the experience is going to be like, and then we were driven out to the airport and we got on this airplane. The back of the airplane had about 30 seats in it and the entire front of the airplane was just white padding. Once we got up to altitude, we walked out onto the padding, laid down on our backs, and that's when we were told to get ready for the positive Gs because we were going to start going up very, very quickly. And then once we reached the top of that peak, we started going down and that is when we started to lift up off the ground and experience zero G. A lot of people think that it feels like you're falling or plummeting to the earth, which you are doing, but it really did not feel like that. It was not scary at all. And there were a couple of people who got sick, but nobody was afraid. It wasn't that sort of thing. It really felt like you were just floating. Now, obviously, as I'm floating around and spinning all over the place, this footage is kind of all over the place as well. You don't really know what's up, what's down. And while this photo shoot was happening behind me, I was actually able to stick the Theta up in the ceiling. And what that allowed me to do was get some stationary footage. So the camera itself was totally stationary while everybody in the plane was floating around. As you can see, we had a lot of problems with the photographer floating around, the model floating around, the, the lighting, the guy who was actually holding on to the Photo B1, he's floating around. So the photographer and the lighting guy actually had their own person whose job it was to just hold them down so that they wouldn't float around the airplane and they could actually get the shots that they had planned out. Now, when I got back to the computer and I looked at the footage, it looked crazy on the computer and there's a few things that you have to do to actually make it work online. First of all, you have to run it through the Ricoh software. That's going to make it a long video strip. But if you actually want the video players to recognize this footage as 360 degrees, you have to embed it with some special code to get Facebook or YouTube to play back the footage in 360 degrees and give the viewers the option to scroll around. As you'll notice, once you take this footage and you spread it out and you make it 360 degrees, it's not the highest quality. However, for such a small camera and so relatively inexpensive, I think it's still pretty cool for what it is. Throughout the process, I also was able to snap some pictures. I found that the camera wasn't particularly good. It didn't do very well in low light. I captured a lot of blurry shots that I thought would have worked out, but when I got back to the computer, I just realized they were kind of unusable. And of course, because this camera doesn't have an LCD screen, I couldn't tell in the moment that the picture wasn't any good, and so I didn't know to reshoot it. Now, it is possible to hook this camera up to your cell phone so that you can view the images as you take them, but I had a lot of issues with the app. I didn't find that it worked very well, and so for me personally, I'm not going to be one to use this camera with the app very often because I didn't find it to be very reliable. 
Is the Ricoh Theta a professional option for 360 degree footage? Absolutely not. But in many cases, people aren't looking for the highest quality video footage anymore. People are just looking for an interesting way to bring video content to their viewers. And the Ricoh Theta is one of the easiest products I've ever used in my life, although it's a little bit more complicated to actually edit the footage afterwards and post, taking the pictures and taking the video could not be easier. I wanna give a big thanks to Wix for allowing me to be a part of this photo shoot. It was an unbelievable opportunity. This was on my bucket list. I never thought I would actually get to fly up in the Vomit Comet, but it's an experience that I will never forget. And if you guys are looking for a relatively inexpensive 360 degree camera, check out the Ricoh Theta. I think you'll really enjoy it.